why would you want to watch this video? Well, I did one like this when I purchased my Stepcraft M1000 CNC machine, and I've got 22,000 views on YouTube, not to mention all the follow-up views just from Stepcraft products. Hello everybody, George Kenner. If you're one of my subscribers, you know why I bought all these multi-roll colors of tape. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to buy a class one CO2 laser. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to get the dimensional sizes of each of the machines that I was considering and put them down on the floor. Now, there were a bunch of things that I considered you know, even to come up to the preliminary review of which machine that I was going to do. But the first thing I did was I thought of what was my motivation. And my motivation has been, I wanna build out a wood shop, I wanna get it all completed and then convert over and start to do some projects for my friends and relatives, but have every tool available. One of the things that I was going to start with was actually a CO2 laser, but I went with the Stepcraft M1000 CNC and I've been building out my garage since. Good fortune hit me and I ran into a diode laser, the Xtool D1, and I love it. I think it's a great way for everyone to get started. I've, I've looked at some of the projects that have been done with CO2 lasers and I basically duplicated it with a far less expensive machine. I think it's a great introductory machine into lasers, but in no way, shape or form is a 10 or 20 watt laser the same as a 100 watt CO2. So what I did was I started to, to look at it and the amount of space that what I would have in my garage. I do not plan on turning this into a business. My motivation is solely hobby. However, I've noticed that this is an industrial machine. And when I look at all the YouTubes and I did a survey, and it seems like more women are involved with from 40 watt to 100 watt lasers than men are. And they seem to have been making, you know, fabulous businesses out of use, utilizing these machines and working within the time period available to them. So, you know, what my motivation was, was it was coming up on my birthday and I had some birthday tool money. I was going to buy a motorcycle. Now, what does a motorcycle have to do with this? Well, I could not get the motorcycle. If anybody knows anyone from Yamaha and they'd like to have me demo a um, TW200, <laughs> I'd love that. But I just couldn't get my hands on one of them and I started to think. You know, I'm a single man, but if I was a married man, you, trying to convince your wife that you need to have a motorcycle is sometimes a little bit difficult. It is a lot easier to say, sell a laser. So in the motorcycle, I could potentially get hurt. I knew that, I still wanted one. Um, it was gonna cost me several thousands of dollars. I started to look across and I thought it's gonna sit in my garage, it's just gonna get dust. I'm gonna ride it five or six times a year. I can really use this laser. So what I did was I kind of took my motorcycle space and committed it, thus the tape. So if you're looking for you know, your motivation, maybe you look, have to look at your justification. I'm sure that there were a bunch of women that went to their husbands and said, honey, I'd like to have the CO2 laser, it's very expensive. And then what they did was they probably went to the least common denominator. And in sales, that means the monthly payment. Many of these machines are financeable or leasable. So if I looked at my motorcycle and if I was gonna make a monthly payment on that, or I was gonna make a monthly payment on a laser, well, hey, a monthly payment's a monthly payment. One potentially can earn money, the other could potentially get me killed. So it, for me, it was, you know, I, I made the logical decision and I decided to go with the CO2 laser. Now I'm gonna break this up into different chapters and show you that was my motivation and even a part of my justification for the purchase. Let's talk a little bit about affordability. You can buy a CO2 laser, and I'm gonna use a range, the 80 to 100 watt, 
for between about $5,500 and about $25,000, depending upon the brand and the specifications of the laser. Now, what I really found was that many of these machines are component pieces assembled from different companies. One of the largest manufacturers of the tube is called Reese. Now, I really don't know whether the Reese tube is the best tube or not, but what I investigated was how much does it cost for a replacement tube? And one of the things that I found is the, the tube's going to have a power supply. Those power supplies come in a range. One of the things that you can do is if you buy a, say an 80 watt machine and there's enough room and sometimes you can get an extension, you can later purchase a 100 watt tube or just change out the power supply and the tube and get a little stronger machine. So if you're you know, looking at the affordability and you want to get started but you don't have a couple thousand dollars extra to go to the next level up, there are expansion capabilities. They're very similar to what I would call a PC computer. If you have a gamer quality computer and you want to change your motherboard or you want a bigger hard drive, you can in many places just pull it out and stick one in. Many of these machines seem to be about the same. Now, they come in different size machines and different size tubes. Again, the reason that I put the tape on the floor. One of the things that I found is that some of the machines will come with auxiliary parts, sometimes an additional fan or blower that's not part of the component machine, and a cooler. So you'll notice on this layout, one of the machines, there is a, an extrusion or a protrusion for a, an additional cooler. That's going to sit and run independently and may even require more electricity. Now, each one of the machines that I compared were 110 machines. These are standard machines that you can go over into and plug into the wall. In some cases, I've had people suggest that you have at least a 20 watt dedicated line for this, for a constant power supply. But again, that's research that you'd want to look at per machine. If you go to the smallest machine, something like a Glowforge, maybe that's not even necessary, and then you can go to the specifics. But before I get to the specifics of each one of the machines, one of the things I want to talk about was when I was in a young man, about sixth grade, we were taught how to look at the advertising that is done and really how fair it is. So in looking at the websites, that is one of the major methods of advertising. I noticed one manufacturer, I went to their website, their machine looks like a tank. But when I see all the glossy photographs, that come in in after marketing for this company on my uh, web browser pages, they're always a phenomenally looking sleek machine. I'm thinking to myself, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you picture your own machine? Nevertheless, it's the type of thing that happens. One of the big methods that these are, uh, that they utilize are their own promotional videos in YouTube. I went to one, I was disgusted by it. The, the gentleman starts out and he says, I'm gonna make a totally, completely subjective technical analysis of these machines. And then in his conclusion, he says, go to the, our Facebook page and compare us against the other guy. Facebook pages are controlled. I'm smart enough to know that. If you get a bad comment, you kick it. If somebody asked a technical question, it's not favorable, you say take it into the personal chat system and then you kick it. That is not a good place to do your research. If you could find somebody that you could have an honest discussion with, that's probably much better research than trying to compare a Facebook page. Nonetheless, I've seen it, it's out there. I saw one comparison that was done where one of the companies takes and they manufacture the, or assemble the piece in China and then they bring it to the United States and some modifications to the wiring are made. That was painted to be very, very negative. Well, let me point out something to you. There's a company called Callaway and another one called AMG. They go out and buy brand new cars, Corvettes and high-end Mercedes and remake them. 
add another $100,000. To think that without making a technical review, an engineer's review to find out whether that was necessary, to me is just objectionable. It's not fair. So when I started to look at those reviews, I, I was like, you know, here's, here, this is just not fair. I don't like this. I even left a comment on one of the manufacturer's pages on YouTube. They kicked it. So how fair is that? It's for you to determine. And it may, is, it did for me, drive me to look at things a little more carefully. These are large purchases. You could spend $25,000 on one of these machines. You should be very aware of what goes into them. I've been looking at one company featured in Southern California and they will actually put you in contact with somebody that owns one of their machines and goes and talks to them. That's rather favorable. You, although most people would only go look at one machine, it, it is a lot better than just trying to listen to somebody that is puffing their own product on YouTube. One other methodology of sales. It's called the affiliate. And what happens is they will take, the different companies will take an either loan, give, or sponsor somebody and have them review it. Some of the YouTube, you know, uh, influencers, they call them, will get an absolutely free machine just to get the exposure. And I consider that relatively fair. However, I want to talk to the person that did it. If they are really using the machine, are they really in the industry? How frequently do they use the machine? But that, to me, is a lot better. An affiliate that I can communicate with and talk to that's actually using the machine, that's better than listening to the company themselves pontificate about their machine. It's just, to me, that is the methodology that I've utilized. Let's go on to the next topic. Actual comparison would be the best way to make the selection based upon the size that I have available to me. You could maybe go to one of the manufacturers and if they even have all of the machines on the floor that they offer, see the quality differences between the machines and the speeds. Now, one of the companies that I saw, they did a time and speed comparison machine to manufacturer to manufacturer. And they said, our machine is as fast as that one, but we don't publish it. Why? You just made the verbal statement that your machine was as fast. Everyone now, in my opinion, would have the reliance upon the speed of your machine being equal to the speed of the other machine. Again, back to the YouTubes and the advertising that is out there. You wa I want more verified. When I hear something like that, I'll trust, but let's verify. One of the people from a laser affiliated company got a hold of me and asked me if they could help provide me with some masking product for diode laser. I have something that I was looking for. I mentioned it in one of my videos. They don't even sell diode lasers and reached out to me to help support the content. Now, were they being really smart and realized I was going to buy a diode laser? Well, if they were, credit to them. But they elevated their machine, in my opinion, and it's based upon customer service. Like I said, these are component machinery. You can, you know, you could probably even interchange some of the parts. You can certainly interchange the CO2 tube. They don't manufacture that. Reese is the largest manufacturer. So if something goes wrong with the tube, it doesn't matter whether you have one brand or another brand, it's the same tube. So customer service and learning is gonna be a very important part of that. Someone reaching out to me like that, points for customer service to that. There is a group on Facebook that I'm a member of, a couple of them, that are non-product Facebook pages. Someone pointed out to me that there is a company in Florida. They are supposed to have multiple machines on the floor so you could compare their machine that they offer to the others. Now, I may just jump on a plane and go there. If I can make the arrangements, the time, and I can maybe stop and visit a couple of other people, friends on the way, I may just do that. But if not, I'm gonna do, the next video will be an installment of all the information that I found and I will compare the products specifically. If I go to Florida, you're gonna have another video. The third video in this series is gonna be the one I selected. 
You guys have a great day. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. As you know, my email address is in the bottom. I'm not sponsored. I'm in no way affiliated with any company that manufactures um, CO2 laser. I wish you the best. Thank you.